Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're out here with Buffy again. All right, uh, just kind of want to start out here tonight, um, and then we're going to be heading in, and I'm going to show you, just as promised, how to get that bearing race off of there. And then I've already ordered my bearings, and we'll be talking a little bit about that. And we'll, we have some things on the way to where that project is now. Uh, the the disc for the uh, variable speed uh, pulley system that's in here, the one that rides on a main spindle and the one that rides on a motor. We're cleaning up those those discs that are spring-loaded um, to con control the speed, and we're cleaning those up now uh, in the lathe. So we're going to stop, and we're going to show you that. Um, now, if you didn't notice already, uh, we did clean up this piece here and buffed it out. We actually buffed the handle all the way out and also we buffed the uh, the steel on here there's a little bit of rust and the same thing with our handles on our table and stuff like that we're going to be giving the once over and uh so we can start out fresh and i uh i had to stick it in here because i, I that the visual keeps the motivation going on projects like this oh by the way um i <clears throat> pulled pulled the other mic away from my uh, unit here and I've got a temporary mic I've ordered a new mic but I also set the de decimal down a little bit I broke the clip so I got this jerry rigged so whether it does the job or not we'll see but I did lower the decimals down a little bit so hopefully uh, it's a little more comfortable um, I did see that with this camera I'm using right now it is a little bit stronger it does the same same exact setting but you switch camera to camera you got to lower it down so i'm learning thanks for the input in the comments uh, along with that as well um this back cover i went ahead and i buffed that out also now i'm uh, uh i was just out here i'll go around to this side here because uh, you know i see i moved this through all the motions and I want this to be fully functioning and I want it to kick out and all of that kind of stuff. So I, I've been playing around with the, the motions of everything. And when this, when I was kicking this out, I really, I didn't, I wasn't able to get it to automatically kick out. And once this is coming down here and you relieve the pressure off of this here, when you, when you engage this, it, it, it engages the gear and everything else, but it also lifts this up. And when this comes down or your quick stop comes down and clicks this, it kicks it out. And even so, it's not like, it, it's not like a snap. It's starting to get there, but it needs to be lubed up. But I got a piece of aluminum here I want to buff. I got this this flange to buff and this to buff because I'm buffing everything that's aluminum on this thing. It's just I, I've already gone this far, um, and I just want I want to do it. Um, so while I've got these covers off, I'm going to give them the once over look in there, and if I see uh, enormous amount of rust, if I see something that's kind of broke or something that's kind of frozen, um, we're going to deal with it. So. Now, I was looking. <laughs> okay, there's not too many parts in there, right? Okay, the, they had to give two pages there. There's actually, in this section here, there is 192 different parts that has to do... Well, we got the, the quill out already. I mean, we got the spindle out. We're not going to take out the quill. Um, I don't really see any need to take the quill out. This is really nice service, and what I can see from inside, it looks nice and clean. I don't want that. It actually has like a brass sleeve in here, I believe. Um, I'm not sure what part number that is, uh, but I don't see anything wrong with them, and this thing is like just beautiful. So I'm not going to get into that part there unless I see something eventually getting this out and getting this out or whatever and it happens to fall out or whatever you know on me it's no we'll see all right before we go in i want to at least pour, pull these four bolts pull these off of here and look at what it involves in getting those covers off and uh i think uh i don't know if that's 532 yes it is 
we'll go for this unit here first. Oh, you notice the rain and the wind and all of that? Jose's off the coast right now. We're supposed to get the worst. Well, it's been, it's been a day already. It's kind of like hovering out there now. It's actually only about 70 miles an hour. We've had, we've had worse snowstorms than, than that. I've had hurricane force snowstorms here on this shelter here with no problem. Uh, they got 70 mile an hour winds out there. We're averaging about 40 with some gusts up to 50. And uh, okay, I can feel this is loose. Okay, we got a little bit of gasket material around here, and actually now it's kind of neat because I actually get to see this thing, how it shifts up and down, and you always got to, you, you, I'm looking for wear in on the uh, slide, and I also see what it mates up with right here, so it does have a set of gears, and it goes up and down, so when I put this in place, I'm going to have to make sure that those gears are in line this looks really really clean in here I know you want to see in there right okay well <laughs> ah. let's see if we can zoom you in here and I'll get a light okay so actually if I reach in with this you can probably still see it with no problem okay here's the uh, here's the gears that slide up and down inside here Okay, so this one here, when it's all the way down, is engaging this one. When this is halfway up, it's actually engaging that, that middle one. And then when you go all the way up, it's engaging that one. Now, and you can see that that's why on the side here, you have, uh, you have one and a half, three, and six. And that's the gear reduction, okay? So when it's in the center here, you're actually at the lowest, that's at the lowest range. And that's when you're in the one and a half there. And then if you go... Um, to the three you're here and then when you go all the way up here to the top you're in six so that gives you an idea look how clean that is in there I don't have to do anything in here I don't see anything that I need to I'll look at it a little closer but I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna be happy with that and I get to buff this so Buffy gets more buffing all right let's pull this other one here now I hope it looks as good inside here as it does there. I didn't know how far I wanted to take this thing down, but I don't mind pulling a few of these things off that are going to get buffed, and then I can clean this and I can mask this off. And with all of this stuff off of here, I'm going to be able to paint this head pretty good. So now I've had I've had a viewer that come by and wanted to uh, offer to do a dry ice blast on here, but I tried getting back a hold of them and uh, no luck. And um, I had uh, I had one other viewer that wanted to uh, offer me a 24-inch uh, lodge in Shipley and lathe to replace uh, my closing in there. And of course, uh, no return from there. Okay, this is interesting. Spring loaded. Okay, we do have some debris in here. Uh, and no more than just looks like crud. Probably stuff that gets blown in through here. Okay, so if you're blowing off your mill and, and, and debris has got to go somewhere. <laughs> and some of it goes in here. That's the only explanation I got to uh, stuff being in here. And we're going to put this down in a tray. And I'm going to actually take a scribe and I'm going to kind of like scrape out some of this. And we're going to look at what's in here. I can actually see some metal chips and stuff like that right in here. So I know that it's debris from cutting. And uh, the other stuff is probably just the aluminum uh, corroding up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to be able to buff that. Now, and that was just the handle to shift this in and out, which when that shifts in, 
that pushes and engages the the gear so that's the gear set right there all right now this is the kind of thing where it wouldn't hurt for me to go ahead and pull this cap off of the other mill there and uh, just see which one looks better and make that choice for myself sorry Dennis but you know this is <laughs> Dennis doesn't care. He's going to go through the entire thing and he's going to he's going to be making that mill what it is. And uh and I'm going to make this one what it is with whatever that one is that needs to be put on this one. All right. Okay, so that does, that moves with that key right there. So that key is what drives that in there. We just want to make sure that we don't lose that key either in there. All right, now here is also a spring, spring load there. And that's what pushes back on that arm also. That arm, it should have a position, and there it is, right there. There's the there's the spot that that pushes on right there. Okay, just keeping keeping it in my head, and that's what that little plunger is right there, and spring. Okay. <sighs> That's actually that actually feels pretty nice right there. Okay, now. That's a little bit rusty right in there. It is moving fine now. Okay, that's only two screws to actually get that pulled out to actually take a look at that. Okay, that spring is not pushing on it to pull it out, so. We'll be pulling this off of here. I want to make sure that we got all the rust out of our move all of our moving parts okay <clears throat> I think that's enough out here because I still want to take you into the the lathe inside where I've got I'm gonna set up this the small shaft and we're gonna go ahead and pull that bearing race and we're gonna stop by the closing mill and look at those discs that I'm sanding and prepping uh, for the variable clutch all right Okay, I swung you around here because <laughs> because you know I want to pull that off of them. <laughs> so we are all right. I had the right one to start with, I think. They're just brand new and they're tight. <laughs> Buffy's tight, not the not the wrench. <laughs> Here goes 
Um, I don't know if I got to pull that off of there or if this is going to come straight out, I better pull that off of there too. Boy, that's a real long one there. Okay, and then that's a straight blade. Uh, do I have one? Yes, I do. By the way, I'm loving these Swedish screwdrivers. They're really nice. All right, and I do have a new one of these ordered. All right, now that can come straight out without any effort. Let me get my fishing jammies here to wipe this, clear this off. Oh, there's all kinds of 58. 58 stamp is stamped in here. I don't know if that, it could be the year. It could be the year because when we get in there, and I wanted to talk about that, but the main spindle bearings, Norma. Norma was manufacturing bearings in the United States up until the 60s at some time. Um, I inquired my bearing guy about it, and he's, you know, there isn't too many bearing manufacturers in the United States, uh, uh, you know, anymore. But Norma stopped or ceased to exist in the 60s or so. So, you know, 58, that's, that's, that could be the year this was made. Uh, I'm just shooting a wild hair. All right, let's go ahead and pull this off of here if I can. Okay, I might have to pull this out here first. I'm looking at the exploded view here. Okay, that's got a cap on it and I see a spring. And that's probably the detent for that. There we go. Now there's going to be a ball in there, and there is a ball in there. Okay, we got the set screw out of the other side there, and we, we got this collar to come off of here. Which there <clears throat> is a little tiny key in there that keeps the rotating. This set screw goes down on top of that key. That lines up, and the, the other is a ball and spring, and the ball goes down into here. And it does look gummy in there, so I'm glad I got this apart so that I can see that. Now, there's a lot, there's, there's a bevel gear that comes down in here, and then there's a gear, and then this push rod shifts a cog between two gears on either side of that bevel gear sticking down in there, so you can't get that out. There's a snap ring that holds this gear, two gears, from coming out this way here. The face, the face cog gear, and then the actual worm gear that, that, um, this pinion runs on all right so we got that in there but i wanted to go ahead and i want to pull this key out of here so i can slide this arm off of here and i want to look how bad the rust is in there if there is any rust and that's that was uh that's where i wanted to go with this all right um i'm probably going to go get a pair of dykes um they tend to grab keys and, and lift them out of an area in there Either that or a, a virgin pair of uh, vice grips. I'll be right back. Okay, um, small pair of dykes. And they're not virgins, but they just had their cherry pop not too long ago. All right, um, I'm just going to see if... That's usually how I get those little keys out of there. And uh, dykes tend to get you 
a good grip on it and pull it out. It has a little rust, but not too bad. All right, now, um, I'm gonna get a rag and wipe that and maybe take a little scotch bite and Worst thing you can do sometimes is draw the next item over the shaft if there's a raised booger or something on there. You don't want to scratch out the inside of the next part there. That feels pretty good. I'm just going to see if it'll come off of there easy. Okay, and what do we got? We got a we got a rod. There we go. Is it going to go all the way off? It's going to go all the way off. Okay, and... That gear looks pretty good in there. Pretty nice. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to set this down in here like that and that looks like new in there. That cog looks good. And this slides back and forth in there. Okay, I'm going to slide this around so you can actually see in there. So that when you're, when you're pulling that button back and forth. Okay, kind of kind of hard to get you in that far away and, and close. But you can see that there's, there's a mating gear just like this. On the other side of that little sliding cog. And this button here is actually running a rod and that rod goes down in there and slides that cog back and forth <clears throat> between this gear which goes in this way here and that one that phases out this way here and that is your forward and reverse for your quill so when you go to engage your feed uh, that's that's what's shifting it back and forth and these things are immaculate. Meow. <laughs> Meow. Meow. Huh? You want to say hi? <laughs> you want to say hi? Look at Meow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow. Okay. Well, it's wet. Okay. I'm in here. You go hang out where you want to hang out. All right, that's that looks pretty good inside there. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with anything else in there. I'm gonna clean up the rust on this right here, and there's a little little pin right here on this piece right here, and the way this travels in and out. And pushes this up and down. This is frozen in here, and this is a little frozen in here. This this button right here pushes on this shaft, and this shaft pushes on the bottom of here. Has a pivot right here. So I'm going to pull that linkage out of there, and I'm going to give this a nice bath in here, and really make sure that it's it's washed and clean. While I have this off of here, I'm going to go ahead and pull this um, arrangement here for the quill stop and adjustment and I'm gonna see what I need to take off of here and what I'm gonna to need to do to mount the travel dial onto here alright and we're gonna get uh, into a, a video um, in this series of actually mounting that travel dial on this on this mill here and what it takes to mount one of those travel dials onto a quill on a bridge port all right, I'm I'm done for real now out here, and uh, let's go let's go in and pull that bearing race off there and call it an evening. 
I hear my uh, my chocolate my chocolate ice creams calling me in the shower. All right. You know, I'm taking a, a couple close pictures of this because now that I've got the light up there and I took the rag before I went in and I kind of like wiped this. There's a stamping of 76 here and there's a little square here with a number. There's a, there's a square with a number 21 there, a square with a 58, a square with a 56. Those might actually be inspection um, stamps as well. It'd be kind of a cool question to talk about what they might be there's that lower half and yeah this has got a 75 and then it's got a really distinct 28 there so I don't know what they were uh, symbols of but I'm got a hint that they're probably inspections or something like that all right now we're going inside all right we got our shaft here had it sitting here and uh, we're actually we're actually looking at it and we could see the uh, the wear marks right here where the remember that uh, nut spun on here and it kind of holds the thrust on this bearing right here it, it holds the bearing pack up there okay it doesn't hold the thrust the thrust is set when this nut here locks those sleeves and all of that together that locks the thrust of the bearing set this lower one here and the reason why it's 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 thrust is um, was in the opposite direction that we pushed against that sleeve so um, when that sleeve is locked that way and that sleeve is locked that way, uh, the, the, the pack itself is your thrust, okay? Um, so anyway, I can see this. Now we need to get that off of there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the three jaw here. And I don't have to chuck it up tight or anything else. And... Bring the tailstock in here. And we just need a low speed here. Uh, something like that. That looks good. Okay, we've got our, our torch in here. I was just, I looked at the gas bottles. I hope I have enough acetylene in here. If not, I'll have to get my, my other set. And I like to have my cord out from under my feet. And uh, let's actually check, let's check our... Okay, we're gonna have enough gas. I don't need I don't need a whole lot of flame in there. Especially this torch is pretty big. I, the other torches uh, um, could be a number three or so. This uh, this is actually a three here, but I you know I mean I've I've had number two tip on the other one there, no problem. Um, you can tell it is running slow. Okay, so basically once you got a, a flame here that you're gonna work with and we got our screwdriver here and the screwdriver is basically just to guide we're gonna put we're just gonna let it ride here we're gonna just like put a little force and, and let it roll off of there the heat is gonna swell it the reason why we're using the lathe and we're spinning it uniformly uh, is so that the heat will be uniformly and we want that ring to be we want that ring to grow before the shaft grows so we just focus with it rolling around on the bearing and we're just going to hold our, our screwdriver down here at the bottom with a little pressure in the off position and as soon as the heat and it grows large enough to, to become larger than the shaft it will slide and just come right off of the shaft. Now, 
lots of times I get wheel bearings, spindles, and things like that, and you get a lot. You get those inner races that are all stuck in up against the shoulder or whatever, and you can't get them out. Uh, four jaw between centers or anything in it just get it set up in the lathe rotate it nice and smooth if you got things swinging around you know just tie them off to the way stay away from it you know as best you can and that's all all you need to do is have a spot sometimes sometimes it's behind it this one just happens to have a nice radius groove in here so i just kind of went now this can cool down here and after it cools down we'll go ahead and we'll pop the balls and everything else back in the race and we'll pop that back together Okay, I already know I haven't pulled it off of here yet, so I already know that this race goes this way here. We have the bearings and we have the cluster in here, and we can actually pop this bearing right back together. All it did was pop free. There's a straightaway right here on one side, and there's a there's a thrust on the other side, and that's why you have a matching pair of thrust precision thrust roller bearings set at the right distance from each other and that's what the load is in here the number here bmj348 okay the m stands for medium load okay now you know i've heard all kinds of talk about sending your shafts in and and they'll preload your bearings and all of that um, the only reason why you would if you wanted to this is a medium load, okay? The load factor is in two things, the bearing and that set of spacers that go between the bearings. It's already preset. Nobody has to come up with this stuff because they already did in the bearings, all right? Now, if you wanted to change it to a heavier load or, or a lighter load, which there would be an L or an H um, that would be in the bearing number or similar to that, um and that would be telling your your load on, on or your rating load rating i believe it would be it might be a little off on that but basically uh, we're talking about the the symbol and and what that actually means but it's set between the bearings and those sleeves so it's not like you send it to a shop and somebody is creating that okay they're just putting things together um so Anyway, I ordered my new set of bearings, and the two bearings that go down here are costing me right around 300 bucks, and the one bearing that's up here is about 100 bucks. Okay, I gotta wait. This one up here is coming from Germany. All right, so I should have them here in about three, four days. So, uh, less than a week to get the bearings for this, which I'm not in a hurry, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and when this cools down, I'll pop this back together, and uh, just so that we have have the, the bearings themselves. All, all pop together and um, and I have them sitting around in worst case scenario if I actually needed if if you accidentally popped one apart the reason why I want to pop one back together for you is you know you could pop it back together as long as it's clean you know you want it clean and uh, lubed up you could you could put your machine back together if you had if you had one of those circumstances where you could not wait and you needed to have some kind of running machine you could pop that back together, all right? So as long as you didn't damage damage any part of it. I didn't put enough heat on here. In fact, I can already hold it, all right? So I didn't put enough heat on there. A couple hundred degrees grows at a thou and a half, two thou, something like that. And uh, that's all you need for that to slide off of there. All right, let's go take a look at those sanding uh, uh, um, tapered uh, cone uh, pulleys. The halves, I got those in the other room there. Let's go take a look at those. Okay. Um, this one in here, I've already been lightly sanding on it. I got a little bit more. This is what they have they look like. And we're going to have to get in here, not this one here, but the other one. And this one right here is the moving one. This is a stationary one. This is a stationary one. Uh, and the other one slide. And they have a nylon key and a nylon uh sleeve inside and we're going to be replacing those and that's going to be another part of our video in this series here um but you can see how rusty and yucca these look and you can actually see that that's an area right there um that was just totally rusting out and they they got rust here and there now they're not they don't they don't actually need to be 
remachined or a skim cut on them. Um, they're they're going to pretty up as soon as I get to running them. And I've already got a really nice surface on this one here, and it's been minimal. And all I did was put it in here, and I just put a dial indicator on here. I didn't really dial the face, but I dialed this. And when I watch it, it, it wobbles a little bit, but that wasn't important. Just taking my palm and just orbiting and I've taken I've taken all the high spots off of there there's no way I'm gonna get in it you're not this is these are ductile or cast iron parts and they are kind of porous all right so you're not going to get in there but this thing is really baby butt smooth right here and uh there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that i'm going to continue working on getting the rust off the outside i'm going to take some of my uncle harvey's uh rust remover um and i think i still have plenty of that left and i'm going to paint these things up and i'm going to get all that that build up of rust on the outside and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put a spray paint coating of the uh, ru rusty uh, rusty brown primer i kind of like on there and that's all i need to seal that up just so it doesn't rust anymore and the internal bore the key i'm just going to clean those up and inside this one here on the inside of the bore is the brake so that's where the brake shoes go against and i'm going to make sure that that one's clean okay but that's kind of what we're doing with these pieces right here uh for <laughs> You know, for how bad they they were, you know. Bearing goes over here. It's going to be fun and interesting putting in these sleeves. There are a little tiny plastic sleeve in here. Uh, they look like black Delrin, but I don't know what plastic they actually use. And, and a key, and then the key has a keeper in here. And they give you some kind of... Uh, uh, cement to actually help hold them in there and we'll be probably cementing them installing this and sliding them over the shaft so that they hold out to their their shape and uh we don't have the one one or two of the kits i saw actually has a kit that has dummy dummy shafts that you can slide in here but uh why not use the real real mccoys all right so that's that's what our plan is going to be all right, I'm going to call it a night, and uh, and we're going to shut up the shop there. All right, I hope you enjoyed uh, the time with uh, Buffy and I. <laughs> we got a little bit more done on her tonight and, uh, and sharing it with you guys. All right, until next time, get her done.